Well, hello there. I would love to share with you our morning basket and the things that we've got inside of it for this month. So let's check it out. Hey there, everyone. If we haven't met yet, hey, I'm Ash with Joyful Noise Learning, and we are so glad you're here today. Today, I'm so excited to team up with Leilani at Living With Eve and with a bunch of other amazing homeschool YouTube mamas. Uh, we're gonna be talking about our morning baskets. Some of us have a basket. Some of us may have a shelf. Some of us have a box. Some of us have a cart. So it doesn't matter what you call it and what holds your things, but what do you use for your morning time uh, with your kiddos? And I've been doing morning time for probably since the beginning because I've been homeschooling uh, for about eight years now. I have three kids. They are sixth grade, fourth grade, and second grade this year. And we've been, like I said, we've been doing morning time the whole time because I learned about it from Pan Barnhill and a few other, uh, those veteran homeschool mamas uh, way back when, eight years ago, when I was researching all the things. So basically what I call morning time is that time in the morning that you gather everybody together and you do a few subjects together. Uh, you do some memory work together and you read together um, in order to start your day. I do wanna say here that morning basket, morning time doesn't have to be in the morning. There's been seasons where we've done it around lunchtime in the afternoon because of you know the toddlers that we had. And sometimes doing that, that sit down and read time is a little bit easier when you don't have the little ones around. So morning time doesn't have to be done in the morning. Maybe it could be done at nighttime when you have dad around too. Or you could kind of be like me where you kind of split it up a little bit. That's how I do it. Um, but would you like to see what's in my morning basket? It's a box, but I really do. I split it up. This I've got this one here. I've got my cart over in the dining room and I'll take you over there after we look at this one here first. So, all right, let's look and see what's in it. Okay, hopefully you can see me okay. Um, one thing I wanna share that we have in here is these things. Got this, I got this one to go with our medieval unit study. Got this little doodad here. And I've got a few, just, you know, drawing. Oh, this one needs to go back to the library. Uh, <laughs> And notebooks, notebooks galore, because you need to have something for your kids to do with their hands while you're doing morning time um, or morning basket, whatever that is. And my kids do enjoy drawing. Some of them enjoy little activity books like this. And I got them some uh, how to draw books. So I have these in our morning basket. So when it is time for morning time, they can go to that basket and pull it out, whatever they choose that day. So I highly suggest doing that. There's times where we've had like fidget toys in here. I don't have any here currently. Sometimes I pull out Play-Doh that's in the fridge right now um, for my youngest. Uh, well, my older kids like Play-Doh still too. So um, you're never too old for Play-Doh, right? But that is the first, oh, here they are. There's the other notebooks I had. So just some plain notebooks that have plain pieces of paper that the kids can draw in. And you'll get lots of fun drawings when the kids are just sitting there drawing while they listen. So lots of dog man copies here. <laughs> so that's what I love in my morning basket is that. All right, and then we have our things that we read all together. So I'm currently using a Kind Kingdom by A Peaceful Press, and most of these come from her suggestions. So we've got Grimm's Fairy Tales, which is what we're using for over this entire year. We're reading a fairy tale every Thursday in general. Sometimes I don't get to it, but we got that. And then our current read aloud, which happens to be The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis from the Chronicles of Narnia. So we're almost done with that. We've got like two, three chapters left and then we'll just go to the next one for a read aloud. And then I have a few things that were suggested from her, uh, from the Peaceful Press, and that's Farm Anatomy. Uh, we look at this about once a week as well. Uh, this is a fun one. It's got really neat art inside this one, really like this one. 
So we've got the farm anatomy, we've got the nature anatomy, and I think we have the oceans one too. So we have all three. This was the one we didn't have yet, but we have it now. So this one's a nice fun one to look through. And then I put our like read aloud history and science books in here, and those change every week. So for example, this week is Honeybees from Explore My World National Geographic. That was on the book list and I get it from the library and we sit down and read it one day and talk about it. These are cool pictures, by the way. Uh, we sit down one day and read it, talk about it. That's in my morning basket. And then also this week for history was a book on King Alfred. So this one I got on Amazon because I cannot find it at the library, but it was pretty fun. You know what I did for this one? I, I'll tell you guys. So I read this one yesterday and I thought I needed to jazz it up just a little bit. So I played some, <laughs> some like Viking medieval war cry and music, uh, ambient, ambience music uh, while I was reading it. <laughs> so part of the time it was just this like medieval with like flutes and drums uh, and lyres kind of music. Other times it was like war cry, like battle sounds, because there's a lot of battles in this book. <laughs> but I played that on YouTube <laughs> while I read it and that was a lot of fun. So. I enjoyed that. So <laughs> we're doing uh, Kings and Queens of uh, Great Britain for our history focus this year. And that was our study for this week. Okay, another thing I've added that does not go in with the kind kingdom is the truth and grace, memory work. Uh, we've been doing catechism, like I said, from the beginning. Our old church used to do it. Uh, my older two have been doing catechism since their own kindergarten year. Um, and even before that, um, so they know quite a bit already. Um, my youngest is still trying to catch up and we haven't, so we know like the first 25 questions fairly well, or we, my kids know, but I realized, okay, I wanna keep going with this. There's a lot more, there's a hundred or so, little over a hundred, maybe hundred. Let me, let me look. 135 <laughs> questions to go through in this, this is level one. I know there's another book, um, but we did a list a little bit last year and we're just continuing it with it this year um, with the questions. So I like this one a lot and it's super helpful. And I've used other catechism resources before. Like I went to the internet, searched catechism questions for kids and printed it off and had it in a notebook for a long time. So I did that for a long time. But now I have this cute little book here, which also has um, some hymns and the Nicene Creed and some scripture memory to go over and so far i've been picking our own scripture memory but we're done with that one currently i might be picking one from here um, that my kids don't know just yet um, a lot of these they've done already um, but some they haven't so oh yep psalm 100 right there we just did that one uh this month so we're ready to move on to another scripture memory now and also on our bookshelf here just down here like this is our morning time box uh, we also have two other boxes down here with uh, books that go along with our history or science unit that we don't always read all together, or they're just library books that the kids have picked out and want to read on their own. And so the kids know they're always here and they can come gra it, grab it anytime during the free reading or um, other times they need, they want to read. By the way, I did share recently our homeschool space in general uh, in a video a couple weeks ago. So you'll want to check that out here. And I did have fun with it, by the way. I tried to be a little silly with that one. Uh, but I forgot to share this space in that video. So this is a continuation of the other one that I posted before. If you haven't seen that yet, you'll wanna check that one out later. Okay, so let's transition now to my cart over in the dining room. And I have a couple other things that I plan to use in the future. When I do use those, I'll probably transfer those books to this box uh, when we're ready to jump in with those resources. All right, so this is our other section of morning time basket morning basket put some of my teacher's manuals down here for when i do do teaching but i've got a couple books here that i am excited to use that we kind of do in morning time too oh did you finish it yeah. that was it you read one section here read one more section okay. one more okay so one of those resources is the Essentials of Music Theory from Alfred's. Um, I plan to do this once a week with my kids on Wednesdays uh, to go over some music theory. Music is really important in our house. And some of them have had some experience with sheet music and reading music. Some of the kids haven't. So that is why we're doing this all together uh, with my kids. Other thing I have in here, if it'll come out. 
I don't know how to get it out. <laughs> we'll just do these. All right. So, um, I read with my youngest. I read some of their Charlotte Mason based book list books. So we're currently doing the Burgess book. The Burgess Budberg. <laughs> We're currently doing the Burgess Bird book <laughs> for children uh, by Thornton W. Burgess. So good. These are so good. I really enjoy reading these with my kids. Um, they're kind of older, like old school writing, but they're fun. They're fun and they're funny. They engage me. They engage my kids. So it is my seven-year-old's time turn to go, with, go through this with me. So I've got that one in there. Um, we've also got Trial and Triumph, and this is recommended by so many curriculums out there. But we pick this up and we read through a chapter every once in a while. I don't have it scheduled right now, but we've done a few last year and we plan to do a few more this year. And I have, this is also for my youngest, 50 Famous Stories Retold. I've not read this one yet, but I know it's recommended by um, our Kind Kingdom curriculum. Um, I'm probably just going to do it with my youngest as well but it's over here too. Okay, <laughs> next we have our geography items that we have over here. Um, I use the classical conversation maps and songs that go along with it. So I've got our European geography maps here, and then we have draw Europe here, which we do once a week, uh, where the kids sit around and draw a piece of Europe. Is that it? Oh, that's the other one. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> so where we have the kids sit around, they just draw. They just draw uh, just a few pieces and then we stop and then we add more the next week. So that's what we're doing there. And then with A Kind Kingdom, learning about uh, kings and queens, we have our kings and queens cards. These are really fun. So Richard, the Lionhearted, House of Anjou, Elizabeth the First, House of Tudor. And then it goes back to like the first one. William the Conqueror, House of Normandy. William the Second, House of Normandy. And then it just goes through all the... All oh, of the kings and queens. These are these are just so cool. I really like these. I'm just a history nerd. Just, I like them. <laughs> and lastly, it took me forever to get this off. Um, we're going to be doing Who is God and How Can I Really Know Him? I'm in the middle of trying to finish uh, How the Bible Was Made, The History of the Bible. That is by Where Did You Learn That? by my friend Rachel at Seven and All. So you'll definitely want to check that out. Amazing resource. We're almost done with that. We've got like two lessons left with that resource. I don't have it printed out because I use it digitally on my computer. Um, but after we're done with that, then I plan to do Who is God about once a week, maybe twice uh, during our morning time. It's basically a biblical worldview of God and truth is what it is. And we think this is very important in our day and age these days. Um, and it's by published by Apologia. We're excited for that one. Okay, well, there you go. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out the playlist for the other homeschool moms and their morning basket for this season. It might be their fall morning basket or maybe it's their September morning basket. Uh, don't forget to check them out. And don't forget to check out Leilani at Living With Eve. Love her, love collaborating with her. She has an amazing channel. She's an amazing friend. It's a wealth of information sharing about a biblical worldview when you teach your kids at home and talking about teaching kids with special needs. You'll definitely wanna check her out and I keep saying that, but it's true. It's true. Here on my channel, we love to talk about Charlotte Mason inspired homeschool, as well as biblically based resources. And I'm a follower of Jesus and love inspiring others to teach their kids and train them in God's word and follow the Lord. So that's what I do here. Please consider subscribing, hitting that like button and coming back for more next time. Uh, next week, I'm gonna be sharing about, what am I sharing about next week? Oh yeah, uh, changes that I've made in our homeschool uh, from last year. So like, what is do, what am I doing differently this year and why have I made those changes? So if, if that interests you, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell and come back next week for that video. So I love to post weekly and hope you consider sticking around. You guys rock at homeschool. Please go find his joy among the noise. I'll see you in the next one.